And welcome to another episode of Unhindered by Coding. It is 10 o'clock. Let's put some code. Hello, Izitsu. Always wonderful to see you. Um, so this is episode 56. So many episodes. Um, we'll probably have basically two weeks worth of episodes here between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then there'll be another break. And then we'll have a pretty long stretch. Um when we come back in January. Uh, <clears throat> and so I'm still completely... Buff oh, actually, I'll, I'll share um, uh, so weather here last night. Um, I live in a place where there's snow. Um, actually, we had very little snow. We had intense wind, and uh, it was very breezy um, and lots of blowing snow. So, yeah, that's my universe. Boop. Um, so we'll um, have... Uh, I'm, I'm totally stuck on the web app, and in particular the OAuth business. Um, and I just haven't had time or made time, maybe I'm in denial, um, to really try to address the the authentication issues, so I'm still putting that off, um, and I don't know. Maybe that'll just have to be a Christmas thing. I thought I was thinking it was going to be a Thanksgiving thing, but the 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 workers, the Cloudflare workers, are just causing me all kinds of trouble. And my attempts to get some people on the Cloudflare forums to help me out. They haven't gone anywhere. I'm tried very hard in fairness, so I don't want to be too critical of them. Um, but uh, I just don't feel like I've got anything useful to do there. So I'm going to put that off. Um, and so today we'll do come back to the Evolution of Computation Project in the morning. And then in the afternoon, actually, I, I'm going to return to the segmented file system um, I think I've, I've decided I want to actually rewrite the server. The server right now is in Java. And I thought that the client worked out really nicely. And in fact, we'll have a lot of the code that we need for the server anyway, because the types for packets and things like that are all there. So, um, I think that, and it'll be an interesting example of a single, uh, lib crate with two binary crates, one for the server and one for the client, um, and sharing code across those. So I think that's what we're going to uh, do this afternoon. But today, this morning, now, we're going to do some evolu evolution computation stuff. Um, and in fact, so we had gotten sort of close. So uh, at the last stream... Um, we had been, we had turned population into a, uh, a trait was the main thing that we worked on. And then that caused all kinds of things to break in various ways. And we were kind of working on fixing those things. And it felt like we were pretty close, close enough that after the stream was over, I tried just finishing it up and I realized that I, things were just kind of a mess in places. And there were parts that I didn't understand what the error messages were telling me. Um, there were decisions that had been made kind of in the heat of battle that I didn't feel like I could actually explain or support well. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not happy about where this is. And part of the problem was that there were issues that we were making changes in places like population, which then led to changes in other places like selection and then generation and then the main lib code. And th there were things happening at a great distance from the change. Um, there were things breaking like a long way from the change and it was difficult to connect the dots because it was such a distance from point A to point B. And that was worrying. 
It certainly made it harder to sort of follow things. The other thing that, that bu made me anxious, uncomfortable, uh, smelled off to me, is that I think one of the things that I like about refactoring when it's done in a pretty disciplined way is the idea that the code should typically work all the way along. I mean, you want to minimize the the distances you travel where things don't work. And we were like in a non-working universe for two hours and it still didn't work at the end. And uh, it felt like we kind of had blown up the whole th thing and needed to then reassemble the whole thing before anything would work again. And that was worrying. And it also was... I, and this is related because there are very few tests and tests for stochastic things like evolution and computation are always hard, but at a minimum we could have smoke tests. Like, can we actually build one of these, a, 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 a population, an individual, um, does a selector return something that was at least in the set of things that could be returned um, even if we don't get into the, the statistics of did it return the right thing with the right frequency, blah, 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 blah. Um, we don't have really hardly any tests. And so it wasn't clear that local changes were okay because we didn't have anything to check them against except for trying to get the whole thing to work and seeing if, if stuff was good. And all of that seemed kind of undisciplined and, and I, I, bleh, I didn't sit well with me in some ways after it was over. Um, and, um, and and this is in no way criticism of, of anybody or anything. This was just like we got into it and, and that's what happened. And, and I, you know, I talk a, talk a big game, you know, in classes, but it doesn't mean that I do those things all the time or even as often as I would like to, right? Do as I say, not as I do. And I don't think I did what I say um, when we were working on this Wednesday. Um, and I'd like to basically kind of start over and do this again and try to be more disciplined about it um, and try to make sure... I feel like I understand the choices that are being made and that I've got some at least small tests that back up um, what's going on. So there's a question about kind of where to begin. And so this the code that we're looking at here basically rolls back to before Wednesday's session although I'm clearly going to um, use ideas that came up Wednesday a lot um, because I think there was a lot of good in what we did Wednesday and I want to sort of bring that in, but in a more disciplined way. You could also argue that this is another example of, you know, you got to build it three times before you get it right. And so you could argue that Wednesday was attempt one and this is attempt two and a little luck there won't be an attempt three, but you never know. Um, although maybe you could argue this is attempt three, that the first time we wrote this code was attempt one, like months ago, whenever population got written. Um, well, actually, it says here that this is three weeks old. Um, I feel like it probably predates that, but I could be wrong. Um, so that, that three weeks ago was attempt one, Wednesday was attempt two, and this is attempt three, and we'll get it perfectly right and everything will be wonderful, because that's how it works. So, uh, we're going to give this a shot, see if we can, uh, tidy this puppy up, um, and make stuff look, uh, shinier. So the, the goal here is to try to use traits to clean up some of the dependencies. So like, if we look at generation... Generation depends on a genome and a test type um, and that we get this GR, GR, GR spreads all over the world. There's lots of GR going on. And Izitsu shared um, a very cool idea for trying to 
internalize these generics into types like population um, so that as associated types so that we could just say basically you know we've got something population is of type p where p implements some trait population and we don't have the g and the r business that those are associated types inside of population um, and that the hope is that'll help clean this up uh, and it will get in the end fewer of these generic types floating around so that's where we're headed that's the goal um, and notice that we could we could start with individual potentially which has gnr um, although it's not clear to me what the value there is because in the case of individual um, I mean, I could be wrong and maybe we come back to this, but here, like this seems like a pretty natural use of, um, uh, generic types because we do have two types and we have a field that has one type and another field that has the other type. And so, um, it seems, you know, we could hide those, but, um, that seems like a pretty straightforward we have a thing of type G, we have a thing of type R. Whereas in, um, oh, I want generation again. In generation, for example, we have nothing of type G or type R in any of these fields, but all of these fields depend on both G and R. Um, none of them are a G or R and R, but they depend on them. So if we can sort of break that dependency, that would be kind of nifty. So we're essentially just going to start at the top here. Um, now you could just, you know, there are different, we could potentially do any one of these. Um, selector depends on population. So populations um, at a lower level. And so I feel like population might make sense as a uh, first shot. And we have selector already as a, uh, a trait. We did that the other day. So we've done selector. Um, and so, you know, it's really either population or child maker. And we'll probably have to do both of them. Um, oh, child maker is a trait. I take that back. So really population is the only non-trait here. So we're going to tradeify population and then hope that we can clean this thing up. But I want to try to redo the tradifying population in a way that's maybe a little more controlled. So one of the things that we did, um, which I think was a good idea, and I'm going to start by doing it again here, is we renamed this to be VecPop because um, I want my trait to be called population. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is do that renaming again. Um, uh, Vec pop. Now, another thing that we did last time right away is we made this private. And I think we probably still want to do that um, because I think it does help clarify what we need. And we, when we did that, we found that there were a bunch of uses of um, uh, a bunch of uses of like dot len when we should have used size because we implement this is empty in these size here and these weren't being used. We were like reaching in directly to the individuals and looking at them. Um, so I think we want to do that as well. So I'm going to make this um, private. And that's going to lead to a variety of things that have to be fixed. Um, oh, so yeah, one of them is we have to get the individuals in various places. Um, although when we looked at this before, it turned out, so previous individuals is only used to get the length, which was a little weird. I'm not, not entirely sure kind of what logic led me to have this line here at all. Um, so really we can just say self dot size here 
and get rid of previous individuals. Um, self dot size. Oh, um, we're in generation. So self dot population dot size. Uh, and that goes away. So this is what we should have done all along is just ask the population for its size instead of getting these previous individuals and then um, getting the, the length of that. I mean, that was just never a great plan. Um, uh, so we do the same thing here, self.population.size and get rid of that line there. So that takes care of that problem. Um, and then selectors are broken. Um, so here again, we're not using is empty when we should. Um, and now here we've got going to need to do something more interesting there. Here is another is empty. That's easy. Um, uh, again, this is a size thing. Wah, 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 size. And here we're doing choose multiple. So that'll be like the choose up above. Um, and here we need an iterator on the individuals, um, which is, turns out to be related essentially to the choose questions. Um, and that, uh, so that's going to, those are the three things we have to deal with. So there's choose. There's choose multiple and there's iter. And the the big one really is the iter guy. Um, if we have that resolved, um, the other pieces, I think, become pretty straightforward. Um, and so I think the, the natural thing to do is to say, well, there ought to be a method iter on a population that lets us iterate over um, the elements in the population. And if we uh, says we don't find one, so let's go to VecPop and make a iter method um, to clean that up. So we have a new, um, we have uh, is empty and len. I think it makes sense to probably just put it in with these guys, pub fun iter self um, iter so in this case it's gonna be an end of a reference no um, uh, self dot individuals dot iter. So basically we're just gonna return an iterator over, can I get away with just doing that? Oops, I don't know if that'll, no, that didn't, it didn't like that. Um, oh, couldn't find iter. Oh, that's because I'd probably need to import it. Um, well, fine, import iter. Standard, uh, Which iter am I after? I just want the basic iter iter. Slice iter is it who says? I'll go with that. Um, thank you. Uh, we can't do that. So we're going to have to actually provide uh, the actual type, which is going to be an individual. Yeah, so it even is telling us individual gr. And voila, takes care of that problem. So that's good. Um, and that cleans up this iter. And now choose and choose multiple. Um, I think we can just iter dot choose. No, maybe uh, I just need to import something. Um, uh, method is available for, yeah, it's a, it's just a, an import. So I need to do it or random. Uh, doodly doodly do, 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 do. Oh, 
Oops. Pop, pop. Oh, ah. There we go. And no, that did not fix the problem. Oh, uh, it's because I still have individuals there. I shouldn't have had that. Okay, that takes care of that problem. And then down here, if we just turn that into an iter, we're nearly there. Um, but... We have an issue. Oh, it's getting the wrong max. We, this came up before and it was about, I feel like it was an import problem that we didn't know that this gave us a vector. Oh, so this needs to be turned into an iterator again because we had a vector we wanted the max that goes over a collection and that acts on iterators so we needed to turn this vector here into an iterator there um, so that we could call max on it here and voila that takes care of that problem um and then we've got some issues in generation and this actually got a little more complicated. So basically here, there are two places where we need to create a pop, create a popu population. <clears throat> and what we've done so far is just dropped the set of individuals directly into the population. And that isn't going to work because individuals isn't a public field anymore. And so we could make a constructory thing that says, you know, given a vector of individuals, make a population. And that would be entirely straightforward. Or we could do a from trait on vec pop so that given a uh, vector of individuals it would know how to convert that into a vec pop um, or and this is what we did last time and it's probably the most general of these options <clears throat> in some ways is having uh, the from iter, uh, iter uh, trait rust from iter, uh, iter from iterator um, and if we have from iterator then we can construct uh, a population from any iterator of individuals um, and that actually is nice um, it's pretty flexible. We can get iterators out of a lot of different things. Um, in fact, maybe we can even uh, avoid, for example, the collect here um, or have the collect actually collect into a population up here. And then we just put the population here instead of having to do anything. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if we can implement um, from it. Or, oh, actually, let's even try driving it from this end. So if we actually make individuals, uh, let's rename that. Um, let's call that population of type VecPop uh, individual GR. Um, and then this just becomes population. Then this doesn't work because we don't yet know how to collect from a group of individuals into a vec pop. And so we'll need to implement the from iter there. Um, oh, hang on. 
Oh, VecPop just takes G and R. So that's actually why it's complained there. Um, let's do fix one thing at a time. Don't get ahead of myself. Okay, now all of this is grumpy, and that's the type problem. Um, so VecPop from Parallel Iterator is not satisfied. Oh, right. We did this before. We ended up having to implement both from Parallel Iterator and from Iterator because, yes, just like Izitsu said, um, because uh, this um, par next uh, has a parallel iterator um, that we're acting on, uh, whereas just next next has a not parallel iterator that we're acting on. So we're going to have to solve both of these problems. Um, so basically, we, we need a from parallel iterator. We don't have it, so we need to implement that. So let's go do that. Wah, 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 wah. Um, so, impl, we're gonna need GNR. They'll probably need some things attached to them. Uh, from parallel iterate. Oh, I can't spell, that's why this is not, nothing's working. Oh, come on. There we go. From parallel iterator, boom for VecPop GR, boom, boom. To do bang. Um, now this probably needs, yes, a type T. So we're gonna um, need to, that's gonna need to be an individual. Um, wah, wah, wah. G and R. And R needs to be send. And G is probably going to need to be something as well. Uh, G also needs to be send. And we're missing some trait things. Let's go ahead and add that. And then my to-do here was really probably not doing anything. I'm not sure what, what, if anything, it was up to. Okay, so there's our structure. And we need G and R to be send because we're going from a parallel iterator into a single population. Uh, and the because of the from parallel iterator, these individuals may be in different threads, and they're going to have to all come together into a single data structure, um, and that means we're going to have to be able to send individuals from one thread to another, um, and individuals contain G and G's and R's. So, and we don't know what those are. That's the whole point of the generic types. And so it's important that we constrain G and R and say they must be sendable. And if they are sendable, then individuals are, will be sendable because they're just a com composition of G and R. Um, and if individuals are sendable, life is good. Different threads can send individuals to whatever is thread is collecting them all together into a population. So that's not super surprising that that needs to be there. Um, so now we have to implement from par iter, um, uh, and we're going to return a vec pop. Um, and so we need to do that. And so that's just going to be, we want to collect the individuals and construct the population. And we can do that here because we're in VecPop, so we have access to um, the field, whereas we didn't have that access over in generation. So here, essentially, we'll collect these guys up. Um, oh, actually, we'll leave that there. Um, and we'll say let individuals be um, 
par iter dot collect. And I wonder if that'll just work. No. Uh, oh. Par iter is an into parallel iterator. What does that mean? Uh, Rust into parallel iterator. Implements the conversion to a parallel by implementing. So do we do we just need to say into something into par iter gives us an iterable. Okay, so we'd say into par iter and then we could collect presumably. Wah, wah, wah. Into par iter dot collect, and that's. Oh yeah, doesn't know what type I want. Uh, I want a vec of individual of gr. Boom. Hey, that works. And then we'll just construct a vec pop individuals and return that. Cool. So. Um, yeah, so we took the, the parallel iterator. This, uh, their naming I find weird, like par iter you would think would be an iterator, but it isn't. Um, uh, it's actually um, an into parallel iterator, so we have to make it one. That seems weird to me, but whatever. And then we'll collect like, I feel like this name is wrong. That should be a... Um, oh, yeah, self. Good catch. Um, yeah, that's, that's clearly something that I'm better about, but still miss on occasion, sort of the use of self. Um, and so... We make it into a parallel iterator, we collect our vac, and we construct. And then we'll have the same thing. That should hopefully make this first bit of generation work. It looks like it does. So we'll have to do the same thing basically here. This is going to be, um, see the type annotation. Oh, so you're saying I don't need this anymore because it knows that this needs to be a vec pop from here and so it'll find the right collect. Aha, yes, nice. Um, so it knows this has to be a vec, vec pop here from the definition of generation. Yeah, that's where we are. And um, so it knows this has to be a vec pop and then that tells it which collect to use. Um, and you're saying also in the from par, oh, I don't need it here because we know it needs to be a vec of individuals here. Yes, nice, thank you, good catch. Um, since we know the type from here. Um, and so actually that's interesting. I was kind of doing this from the top down, but if I'd done it from the bottom up, so maybe when we do the, the from iterator instead of the from parallel iterator, let's do it from the bottom up because then we will provide more type information than doing it from the top down. It doesn't know where we're headed. So it had no way of knowing what we were going to do with individuals later. So it had no way of inferring a type for that. Whereas if we had written this line first, then when we got here, we wouldn't have needed the type uh, there. So that's interesting. That suggests, and I think I've, I, thinking about it, I think that this has been a thing that I've run into 
in other Rust work and this project and other projects is I th I think I naturally kind of start at the top and just, you know, work my way down. But the type checker in Rust is probably more helpful if you start at the bottom and work your way up. And there's probably even a general comment there about starting from the outside of a project and working your way in, um, maybe, I don't know. That's, that's less clear to me. Hmm. Well, let's not dwell on it endlessly, but we will try doing bottom up here when we deal with this problem. Okay. So we've got, um, so we're going to call this population population and we're going to just take this out here. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so that's interesting. It doesn't need the type inference because I made the change down here, which when we were doing this one, I didn't make this change until near the end. Um, after I'd already like faffed around up here and put the type um, uh, declaration in for population. And it is now correctly inferring that population needs to be a vec pop of GR. And then the problem is here that we don't have um, a from iterator uh, on vec pop. So we're actually getting the right message early um, on that. So that was cool. So now let's, oops, over here, um, we want to impl, and we shouldn't need the send here because we're not, um, there's no parallelism in this one. Uh, gr for backpop, gr, um, where I don't probably don't need a where I can probably just get into it. Um, well, here, let's if we do this, it should fuss that we haven't implemented the pieces, so let's just add them. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, so we they didn't didn't need a where there because um, the type I isn't all that complicated. So we'll take a from iterator. Well, I guess the T what they're calling T here probably could be reasonably put in a where clause, couldn't it? Yeah, actually it could. T. Um, Where, you know, you know, I, mean, I like that syntax better with that over there or that format better than over there. Okay. Um, and so if I start at the bottom again and I say we're going to have self individuals and then we'll say let individuals be um, iter dot into iter dot collect. And it did the right thing. Um, yeah, so I agree that um, I like what Rust format does. That in Rust format actually is a tool I haven't used as much as I should because um, I generally like what it does and I like the idea of consistent formatting. Um, uh, and um, I haven't decided how I feel about like having some kind of Rust format check as part of commit or even just running Rust format before commit so everything gets committed in the same format. If you have experience, anybody out there has experience with doing, because I've seen that people do do that. Um, and if people have experience or thoughts on that, that would be totally appreciated. 
Um, cause I have, it's clear when I choose to format things with Rust format, um, there are places where I haven't, um, uh, done the formatting and I probably should have. So when you say prevent f the committing, um, are you block? So I've seen two versions of this that I can think of. One is it blocks a commit that isn't properly formatted. So it checks the code against a formatted version of the code and says, if these aren't the same, the commit fails. And I've also seen one that says, let's just run Rust format on your code before we finish the commit. Um, and I'm guessing you mean the latter one, that your hook just runs Rust format um, as part of the commit process so that what gets committed is um, properly formatted um, uh, and that nothing that isn't properly formatted can make it into the repository. Is that what you do that um, or something entirely different? And I've also seen people use Rust format as, um, ah, okay. Yeah, so that makes a lot of sense. And that, and that is, I think that's where I would lean. I mean, the idea of just reformatting the code, but not, not making, reformatting the code in a context where you might not have to care or notice what got changed. Um, uh, it'd be a bit like a spell checker that automatically like, fixes all the spelling, but doesn't tell you it's doing it, um, which is a dangerous because maybe you meant the thing that you had there for some reason, but also you don't learn from it. Um, uh, if you don't get to see, oh, this is what I did. and This is what I should have done. Um, there's no opportunity to like learn um, what's going on. So, so that makes sense. Blocking local commits, if not formatted, so maybe I should try to set that up because that would be, I think, a useful thing. Um, let me make a note here to myself. Um, uh, set up um, GitHub or GitHook that blocks local commits that aren't rust boomed happy. Okay, cool. I will have to look into that in my copious free time. So, um, good question or good suggestion. Thank you very much. Always appreciate it. So, lo and behold, this works. And so now Devin is all happy. In fact, Everything seems to be happy. Um, and maybe we can even run stuff now. Cargo build, just for fun. Yeah, there's a couple of warnings because there's some unused stuff in lib. And we can run things. Yay! Okay, so that's awesome. Now, um, so we have now uh, made successfully made this private. So actually I'm going to commit. Um, oh, split the, split the impl. Uh, split the impl, split the impl. I assume we mean here. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Um, so we've got these requirements for send and sync here. Those only apply to this and if we split this impl block then uh, we can get away with a a weaker set of constraints on this guy and that's a great suggestion thank you that was something that you suggested last time um, and it was a good suggestion then and it's a good, good suggestion now um, boom 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 and we're all happy land. Yes. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so now this impl doesn't require these extra pieces. So if I just want to use next, I don't have any obligations to make G or R send and sync. So let's commit this. Um, uh, whoa. Oh, that that's all from the renaming. Um, so a whole bunch of stuff changed because of the renaming. Uh, probably should have committed that first, but um, that's all going to be renaming. And then this is all going to be renaming. So everything but generation and population is renaming. Um, so let's take those two out. Um, back pop. Um, yes, and I'm in a I'm in um, a different uh, um, branch now, and it is. Probably, it probably is exactly the same, actually. I just, um, and we could have probably skipped this part and just gone to the trait part. Um, but I, I wanted to kind of think this through again. Um, and now we'll do the trait part and that'll be, um, also I want to add some tests here um, in a second, um, which we did not do last time. Um, so this renames, uh, so this frees up the name population for use as a trait name in a bit. Um, and then this is all about uh, making the individuals private um, and the renaming, but yeah. Pretty much about making the individuals private. So make uh, population individuals private. Um, uh, in, oh, actually, it's vec, vec pop now. Preparation for um, making a population trait. We made the individuals field in backpop uh, private. This cleaned up several uses of uh, direct, several direct uses of the individuals field when is empty or size would have been more appropriate when calls to um, and um, we had to add an iter method um, to uh, and a pair of from iterator implementations to be able to convert back and forth between collections of individuals. Boop. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, this make individuals private and rename to VecPop, I think this pair of things is pretty much what we just redid, probably structured slightly differently. Now, however, we're going to try to be a little more, or I'm going to try to be a little more structured about things. And one of the things I want to do is, um... I don't have any tests um, for, no, do I care about it here? I don't have any tests for population stuff. Um, yeah, and I do actually want to make sure 
that these pieces work. And I want to, I want to be able to check that if I say something implements the population trait, that we can make the same kind of calls and stuff will still do the right thing. So I think I want to add some tests. Um, so CFG test mod vec pop tests. Um, you know, uh, uh, use super bang, not bang, splat. Um, and uh, so what do I basically have? I need to be able to construct a population. Um, and there are two ways I want to be able to do that. Once one with the new and one with the uh, ability to build something from an iterator. Um, and I'm going to have these is empty size iter methods that I want to check. Um, so let's start with uh, can um, uh, new works. Um, so let's actually build something. So let uh, back pop equal back pop new um, and back pop new takes arguments. Um, so let's we're going to need the size. Uh, get them up here. So we need the population size, a function that makes genomes, and a thing that generates uh, test values. So let's um, do, let's say there'll be 10 things, and we need a function that makes genomes. Uh, so let's make a closure that takes no art. Let's see, what is it? That takes a random number generator, right? Yeah, so it takes a random number generator, so we can actually put that in, and then we turn a G. Um, so boom, and oh, that's the type. I I want just RNG, uh, but I do want and mute. And now I should be able to do something like RNG dot. What can I do with an RNG, a thread RNG? I ought to be able to like ask it stuff, right? Um, so let's go find out what thread RNGs can do. Rust thread RNG. Um, Wrapping a standard RNG. So what can a standard RNG do? Uh, RNG core? So we can do things like next U32. That would be cool. I could deal with that. Um, now, can I make that work next? Oh, yeah, bingo. Okay, so now let's actually boom and boom, comma. Uh, and then we need a uh, function that takes a genome basically returns an R. So I need a closure that takes um, a genome and returns oh we could just do the same thing. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. Um, 
and it's not happy. Um, cannot borrow unge is mutable. It's not declared as mutable. What? Uh, I thought it was a function that took a mutable reference to a thread RNG. Mutable reference to a thread RNG. Warren? Oh. Okay. Um, and then G not happy for what? Oh, lifetime. Oh, because that's actually a reference. I don't want a reference. I want the actual value. Okay. So that makes me a population of 10 guys. Um, and you are saying this doesn't need the mute here. Indeed, it doesn't. Because that's in the type declaration. Okay. Um, cool. Thank you. Um, mm, I think I was confusing. This is the parameter in the call, and this in the is the argument in the definition. Um, and in the the definition, all the type information goes to the right of the colon. And when you're making the call, the type information goes to the left of the name. And so I was doing both in some ways, and that wasn't great. Okay. So thank you. Good catch. So we got a thing, and now we ought to be able to assert that VecPop... Oops, vec pop dot is empty dot not. So it shouldn't be empty, and we should be able to um, say that the size is 10, and I don't know, we could probably say something about the individuals inside of it, but I don't know that that's very interesting. Because um, anything we would check here is probably also checked by the type system. Um, I guess unless we, uh, we could do something like Say this is mod 10, and this is uh, plus 100. And then we could actually do things like assert that um, 0 is at most. Oh, we should probably get an individual out. Um, so let individual be vec pop dot iter dot oops dot next dot unwrap so that is testing that there actually is at least one um, indirectly and then we could say end dot um, genome And in dot genome is less than ten. Um, oh, maybe just to keep this a little so these it's clear these are two different numbers. We'll do that and assert bang a um, hundred most in dot uh, test results. Uh, and in uh, test results, 
less than 120. Boom, boom. Oh, I had a test marker on this. Test. And run the test. Uh, and the test passes. Yay! Which isn't super surprising, but still, it's nice. Now, why are we getting little wigglies? Comparison is useless. Oh, sure. Because it's a U32, so we, we know it's can't be uh, less than zero. So we could get rid of that part of the test. That makes sense. Okay. So now we've got a little test and we've checked that. So this actually tests a lot of things, um, probably in some ways more than we should in one test, but um, we test that is empty does the right thing, that size seems to be correct, that iter does the right thing, um, uh, and then, and new. So this tests everything but the, um, uh, well, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate it, or following. Um, oh, yeah, well, or not. Um, boom, that. Um, so, uh, the only thing that that doesn't get actually is the from itters. Oh, and best individual, which I, th we, we, we may ended up making go away last time. And I suspect we will do the same here, that this will just disappear, uh, because we have a selector that does this. So having this cooked into the population is probably not super useful. Um, so it would be good to check that we can get a from iter to work. Um, so test fn uh, from iter. Uh, so that means we're gonna need an iterator so we're gonna need a little set of things. Um, so I'm gonna make first individual, it's just gonna be an individual, which is gonna to need to have um, several pieces. So we're gonna need a genome and a test results. And we can have these be whatever we want. So we could be like first. Um, to string and um, a little collection of values, and we could do the same thing, maybe make three of them for fun. Second third, second, third, five, eight, nine, three, two, zero, six, three, two. Okay. And then let individuals be a back bang of first, end, second, end, and third end. And now we ought to be able to make a population out of those from the iterator. So let vec pop uh, equal, um, am I gonna need, um, so vec pop from iter, and that's going to take ends dot iter. And no. Let's 
So expected an individual and got a reference to an individual. Uh, into iter. Oh, because we got from iter, and the flip side of that is into iter. So, yeah. So we're using from iter here, and so we have to convert this into an iterator here, not just get the iter from it. And so now, uh, remove the into iter entirely. Oh, it can just... It knows how to convert a vector into an iterator. Ah, yeah. So from iter needs a iter, something that implements into iterator and a vector implements into iterator. So we don't need to say anything other than here's the vector. It knows what to do. Um, okay, that makes sense. And now we can assert uh, that vec pop is empty not and assert three vec pop size and Oh, we can assert that the first one is the first one, but we could also, in theory, say that all of them are all of them. Um, that the individuals in the population are those three things. Um, I wonder what the what's the easy way to do that. Um, Yes. If I get the individuals out of the population with the iterator and I collect them, then I ought to be able to say that that and ends are equal to each other. Um, to let pop ends be Oh, and actually, this is a place where going bottom up might be useful. So I want to assert equal that ins and pop ins are the same. And then it's like, what are pop ins? We'll let pop ins be vec pop dot iter dot collect. I feel like this is a reference problem here. Um, oh. So you didn't know. This didn't give you enough information. Well, that's interesting. Well, fine. Vec pop string vec i32. Oh, no, no, that's not what I want. I wanted back of individual of those things. And now let's see, one, two, three open, maybe three close. Yeah, so that's what I'm after. And this is actually giving me references, right? Yeah, so I get references here. Um... And I don't really want references. Um, so how do I unreference this um, or make ends a set of reference? It are cloned. So cloned creates an iterator which clones. Oh, oh, that's exactly what I wanted. You've got an iterator over reference of T, but you need an iterator over T. And so this clones all of those guys for me. 
And so now, yeah, that, thank you. Is it, so that's exactly what I was after. Um, so now I have a vector and I have a vector and these are not happy because, oh, um, this got snagged here. So I probably need to like clone that, um, so that I can still use ends down below. Yeah. Oh, hey, Wagatha. Wonderful to see you again. Um, it's going well. Um, we're, we're basically kind of redoing something we did on Wednesday night because I wasn't super happy about my understanding of what happened there. And so I wanted to go through it again. Um, but right now we're actually writing some kind of dumb tests, but we're just about done writing the dumb tests. Um, and I think we'll move on to the more interesting part of the program here in just a second. Um, so that's cool. Um, so that actually seems happy and we'll run the tests and the test will pass hopefully. Hey, the test passes. Yeah. All our tests pass. Awesome. So we can, and I guess we could write a from par iter test, but I'm frankly willing to trust that if the compiler's happy and from iter worked, that from par iter probably does the right thing too. Um, and we'll call that a win in an effort to move on. So I'm going to make a commit and then we'll actually try to turn population into a trait and start the chaos. Um, uh, so add some simple tests for VecPop. Um, test everything except from par uh, iter, but I'm willing to trust the compiler on this. Boom. Okay. So let's actually get to the trait business. Let's close the view. So now we want ultimately to have a pub trait population and um, is this a suggestion is to have Whereas before population is dependent on these two types, um, we're now going to have one associated type, which on Wednesday we called individual. I'm actually going to call end here because what we end up is we say in this type is usually an individual. And it made the, I, I found that I, there was a couple of places where I got, I was not reading the error messages correctly because I was confusing which use of the word individual. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I hear you. Um, so maybe actually, maybe the thing to do, maybe th this is the place to say individual no, but hmm. so the the thing that I found I, I would get myself confused. Error messages would sometimes be talking about individual meaning this thing, and sometimes they would talk about individual meaning this thing. And I found I didn't always get which one I was looking at, and I would flail because I had read it incorrectly, and that separating the names was useful. Um, now you could make an argument that we want the trait to be the sort of clean name and the specific implementation to reflect that choice. Um, and so maybe, maybe it would make more sense to have individual be a trait. Although, so I guess a question then is, let's get rid of this for a second. Given that individual does genuinely like 
it it uses these two types. Does it make sense for it to be a trait? Um, I think, for example, well, I mean, I guess let's find out if we if we unpub these, and I'm not going to commit this. Uh, I want to just see what what all breaks. Who talks to the innards? Um, uh, so this is lex case selection, roots around inside, um, but the other selectors don't because they're just relying on the ORD implementations for individuals and population, the test roots around a little bit. Um, bit string, there's a whole pile of, well, no, it's not a whole pile of stuff. Um, uh, so this, my little display function roots around a little bit. Well, that just could be, um, yeah, that's not too big a deal. And then lib, lib in the child maker. So the child maker um, accesses um, so is it so you said if individual is not a trait then having population with an associated individual point is probably pointless. So if I understand you, I think you're saying that the, the, the value of making individual a trait is that we can bring these things inside of it as associated types instead of um, generics that are being passed in. Is that basically the argument? <clears throat> and if it is, that seems reasonable. Um, yeah. Well, okay, let's do that. Let's, let's make individual... A trait. Well, this puts starts basically at the bottom. This is the the most specific type, and we'll make it a trait and work our way up from there to the whole system. Um, so by starting with making population a trait, we were kind of starting in the middle. Um, we were above individual and we were below generation. Um, so maybe this is the place to begin. So let's first start by actually, let's make those two things private. And then I guess we just need um, some get methods on them uh, so they can be accessed. And that's, yeah, that's really all that needs to happen to, and then we'll have to like use them everywhere, but um so impl gr individual gr uh fun uh genome self uh type g self dot genome um fun test results self r self dot test results boom so that takes care of those two things and then we just have to crawl through the great piles of um, sadness to make um, put the associated type that would be on individual directly in population Oh, oh, no, I'll think about that for a second. So you're suggesting that the population trait could look like
And then I'd have to do something like that. I guess we want to call that like genome. And test result. And that's probably just an import. Oh, no. Oh, we don't have a trait yet. Yeah. Um, oh. Well, then, no, that's not going to... Um, Hmm. Yeah, so we wouldn't even do this. So you'd have these two pieces in here. And then when you need individual, you would just say individual genome test result. And then individual stays the same. It's just a struct. And not doesn't become a trait. Hmm. Do I think, yeah, that's sort of where I'm leaning. Um, yeah, I'm, I think that that's my inclination, partly because tradifying everything's kind of fun um, and generalizes stuff in a useful way. Um, And I kind of like collapsing these two things into this rather than have them. It feels like you could imagine having populations that aren't built around genomes and test results. Um, that you could have populations that have other kinds of properties for other sorts of simulations. Um, uh, so I kind of lean toward um, the idea of individual being a trait and it can encapsulate what it needs to. So I'm good with that. I say we go with that. Um, so then population, we'll have to fix a few things, but nothing too bad. Um, in dot test results, boom and boom. So basically you just need to turn a bunch of field names into, um, and those tests still pass. Oh, uh, things don't compile, so you can't get that far. Um, and let's see, genome and genome. And that's all. Of, oh, no. Uh, whoop. Hello. Oh, and genome. No, that's not. Uh, oh. We can't construct. Oh, hang on. Let me see what's going on here. So it's unhappy. Associated function genome is private. Blur? I bet I had that problem here. Oh, and that would be genome. And these are all private. So I need to fix that. Um, so this needs to be pub, or the whole thing is pointless. Pub. There we go. And then that fixes these problems. Great. And selectors has some issues. Test results, open, close. Test results, open, close. Test results, open, close. Test results, open, close. Probably have even done a copy, a uh, uh, search and replace here for this, but genome, open, close. Test results, open, close. And then individual says it has a thing. Aha, right. 
So what I really want here are references, which, yeah, which is what you just said, is it, Sue? Um, so I don't want to give ownership of GNR. I just want to be able to let people borrow them. And now, why are we unhappy? It's a G, so I need to say ampersand. So I need to say that I'm letting you borrow it. And now, is that going to break some of the other places? Yes, it does. Um, because this is... I really want the value here. So I ought to be able to say star that, right? Because it's just a number. And star that. And star that and then bit string I probably have the same problem in the test somewhere uh, oh uh, I've got too many ampersands So I think, actually, I just don't want this. Voila. Uh, and then population is grumpy again. What are you fussy about? Oh, we can't construct individuals that way. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's going to be kind of annoying. How can we construct individuals? We have a new that makes genomes and run tests. Uh, well, we could do that. Um, like I did in the other test with the closures. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the thing to do. Unless, I mean, you could, could make an argument for something like this, having a new that just, you hand it a genome and a test result, and it wraps it up. Um, is there a reason I wouldn't want to do that? Uh, not that I can think of. It does make the testing. Um, yeah. So I think that's, I, I like that idea. Um, so if we call this generate, let's rename this symbol to generate. And then we could have a new pub for new that takes a genome of type G and a test results of type R and it returns an individual type genome and test results. Boom. And, oh, it needs to return self. And this should be self here. Yes. And now, over here, I ought to be able to say dot new everywhere dot new dot new. And then that close curly becomes a close paren, close paren, close paren, work. Oh. And I don't need the labels everywhere. So that's not going to be a happy thing. 
yeah, this is probably a useful thing to have added. So I'm happy about that. Boom. Oh, and it's not dot new, it's colon colon new. Ah! Colon colon. And colon colon. And finally, we're going to run the test. So it's going to pass. Oh, it doesn't even compile, so the tests don't pass. Oh, and now this this solves this problem also. Dot new genome test results. Um, boom, boom. Oh, it's colon, colon, not dot. That takes care of that problem. And then my main has an issue. Oh, it has a bunch of issues in the test. <sighs> so it's mostly just going to be putting parens after things. Might be some reference stuff that ought to be dealt with. Um, okay, that made that all happy. Oh, pop dot. This should. Why did that not get fixed before? That should just be size. And oh, this is. Ugh. Uh, we're going to have to get the first individual out. Let first individual be individual, individual, oh, okay. pop dot iter dot next dot unwrap. Boom. Here we go. And now this is going to be first individual. dot genome open close and so I'm going to copy that and replace all that with this and this and this and this uh, and then I need parens here uh, too many dots. Friends. Friends. To make everybody happy. Okay. Dealt with that. And the same issue. Wah, wah, wah. And this is going to be dot size. Boom, boom, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and some friends because friends are fun. Pio and Pio and Pio Pio. Catch everything. Looks like everybody's not red. That's a happy thing. Um, if I run all the tests. Um, wah, 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 cargo test. And what? Oh yeah, okay. Five passed. All green. Okay, so. So that probably ought to be committed. Um, Cause that was a bunch of changes. Um, and I don't know why that main stuff, most of that should have happened a long time ago, but. Um, oh, the benches, the benches. The benches, yes, because oops, um, the benches are red. 
good catch. Um, and you know, oops, ah, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Undo. Uh, takes care of that, and uh, boom. Now that's red, uh, not red. So cool. Thank you. Good catch on that. So now endless piles of stuff. Um, so m most of this is just from uh, making encapsulating the fields in individual. Um, and renaming new to generate and adding the new constructor. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So I stage all the changes. Okay. Encapsulate fields in individual. So this makes the two fields in individual private and um, adds a new new constructor renaming the existing constructor to generate. Um, yeah, that's a better name for that. Um, boom. Okay. Now, uh, we were, let's finally get to individual. So now I had wanted, hmm. so I would, well, here we're going to have to keep the names different. Like we're going to add a trait, pub trait individual, and it's going to have type genome and type test results. That can't be the same as that. And so we're going to have to have a new name. Well, I'm assuming that's true, right? Yeah. Okay. All manner of badness happens. Um, so I'm going to have to have a new name for this because I feel like this is, this really probably ought to be individual. And so this, um, uh, what is a decent name for this? Um, I mean, I could call it maybe an EC individual because the idea of having a genome and test results is an evolutionary computation kind of idea. Um, and that might distinguish it from other kinds of individuals that you might want to use in simulations, for example, that weren't inherently evolutionary. So I don't know if that's a great name or not, to be honest with you. But I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to rename. Unless somebody's got a name, I'd be happy to take a better one because I'm not sure I think EC individual is a brilliant name. Um, and I guess that would be, yeah, that would probably be more how that would be done. And actually, I'm going to commit that because that's going to change all kinds of stuff. Yeah, eight files. Um,
So, I mean, writing that, an alternative, I guess, would be to put this in its own module, separate from the module the trait's in. Right? So you could have an individual as a directory, as a folder, and have individual.rs be the trait and EC individual.rs be this particular implementation of that. And then you could use the same name in both places. But I feel like that gets me back to the problem that I had of when I was trying to understand error messages, not realizing when it was talking about the trait and when it was talking about the um, associated type. But presumably the error messages would include the module in them. And so it would be a little easier, but it would make the messages longer and they're already pretty long. Um, so even so, you're suggesting even if we keep the name the same, moving it into its own module probably isn't a bad idea. And I do kind of feel like that makes sense. Well, let's do that. And let's do that before we commit. Um, because I think that that'll probably change a whole bunch of stuff as well. So I need to make a folder, individual, boom. And then I'm going to need to move this into there. And I need a mod.rs file that's going to have, it's gonna look like lib.rs at the top right, yeah. So it's just gonna list the mods that we want. Wah, wah, wah. And pub mod ec individual. And it's gonna be like, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to need to make a new file, ecindividual.rs. And then over here, all of this stuff is in fact going to wander off to the other place. And that's going to break a bunch of uses. Yeah, there's going to be piles of broken uses. Um, Remove the nested individual. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. So actually, you say I could have used VS Code to automate much of this. Um, yeah, the trait lives. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see what you're saying. So okay, let me let me undo. And I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just really undo way the heck back. Um, I'm going to undo all the way back. Whoa. No, I don't want to be undoing this part. What have I done? I want to keep that. Okay. So, oh, I guess it just kept these. Um, and now I've probably broken the world. What have I done? Did I undo too far? Probably did. Um... No. If I actually just un 
do yeah so it seems to think that's all that's there at the moment so i don't know why everybody's like shab and now they're not shabbing okay fine um and so if we delete this folder for the moment uh delete now so you say i ought to be able to um automate a lot of this that would be great so is there something like in refactor no um is it am i automating it using rust tools or vs code tools because i do feel like this really ought to be something that but i don't yeah i'm not so what am i uh i'm moving it into a new module and I don't know what in Java, I, I there were refactoring things that would do that for me, but I don't get a lot of refactoring help here. Like that's completely not useful. Um, although, I mean, actually converting it to a tuple struct could simplify some things. So um, is there is there something I should be looking for that VS Code would be like, I will do magic on your behalf. Um, that you can sort of describe briefly? Um, or is this a, maybe I should try searching. Um, let us search the internet. Rust, VS Code, um, move type to new module. Move item refactoring. That's kind of what the sort of thing I'm thinking of. Um, uh, moving it into another module. And it's clearly an open issue. So mm, at least Rust Analyzer doesn't know how to do it, deal with it. Um, and this is in Rust Analyzer again. And same thing. People want to see it happen, but haven't done it. Um, this looks like it'll probably be the same thing. Oh, this was closed. Um, oh, I think just, well, I don't know. Why was this closed? Was it closed because it was move? Well, that's, a, hold it. Am I in Python? Oh, I'm in PyLance. That's not helpful. So that was Python people. Um, not helpful. Uh, so I don't know. It looks to me like maybe there isn't a way to automatically move that. Oh, is it who has an idea? I am open to ideas. I, I, I think I can hear as it's his keyboard um, tapping away as he tries something out. Um, while as it's contemplating the idea, we got 10 minutes. Let me say a little bit about what's going to happen next. So there'll be a two hour break. Go get some lunch. Um, and then I'm going to come back to. Uh, I mean, in some ways, what I really want to do is just keep working on this because I'm having a lot of fun with this. But, um, uh, which I guess is an option. I mean, you know, really, you folks can weigh in however you wish. Um, and if people are like, no, no, change, or yes, yeah, stay put, 
uh, holler. I'd love to have feedback here. So I think the options are we could continue with this. Like, I think we're making progress and, and I like what's happening here. And it's kind of in my brain at the moment. So there's advantages to that. Um, the other possibility is the segmented file system. I, I'm inclined to rewrite the server. Um, we rewrote the cl we wrote the client in Rust. Um, I would like to write the server in Rust. I currently have a Java version. It'd be interesting to write it in Rust and have it all in the same project with one shared library crate and two different binary crates and sort of see how much shared code there is. I think that would be really interesting. Um, and I don't think it would be very hard, um, but I'd be totally happy just sticking with the evolution and computation stuff um, if that's what, if people are okay with that. But if you're like, no, I've seen enough evolution and computation today, I would really rather see you do the segmented file thing Either way, it's all good by me. So if you've got an opinion on the matter, I'd love to hear a vote. Um, uh, hop into the chat, tell me what you think. Um, otherwise, I have to make a decision and I don't like making decisions. Um, but I do... Um, So Zitsu says he was sure there were more refactoring options added to Rust Analyzer, but maybe not. Um, rename individual RS to a new unique name and VS Code will ask to refactor. Then create individual mod S, move the file, and then find, replace, to update all the imports to that unique name. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, that would be a thing. Um, let's do that quick. Um, so rename this to, this is going to become EC individual. So we'll rename it that way. There's rename. Bah, bah, bah. Extension wrote, make refactoring changes. Yes. So, so that did some useful stuff. So presumably things like generation now, yes, use EC individual colon colon EC individual. So that's cool. And we have to save a bunch of stuff. Um, and a bunch of things are red. Why are a bunch of things red? Oh, cause lib. No, now it says EC individual. Lib didn't get saved. That's why a bunch of stuff was read. Um, and now bit string probably needs to be saved and selectors needs to be saved. Yes, and population probably needs to be saved. Voila, okay. So we've done that. And now, um, now we would make the new folder. Um, folder uh, individual. We're going to make a new file in that folder called mod.rs. And uh, we just say pubmod. Uh, Pub mod EC individual. No, oops, not put. Not put. Pub. Now that probably fails, right? Because it doesn't find the file. Oh, that's weird. It did find it out here. Um, and now I'm going to move this guy in, and the world's going to go boom. And yes, whole lots of things went boom. And so the idea is that we ought to be able to search and replace to fix this. Because this will now be individual 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the mod needs to be individual now. And now this is going to need... So the right answer here is individual like that, I think. So yeah, so everywhere it's we have this, we're going to need to change it to be individual in front of it. Um, yeah. So now, in theory, we ought to be able to do that uh, through some global fun and excitement. So we're going to look for that, and we're going to replace it with individual um, and these are all in use statements so boom place and now is everybody happy oh this one's not because we have too many individuals in the front but everybody else is not red. Awesome. That is spiffity do. Um, and does Clippy yell at us about anything in particular? Uh, it has one fussiness. Well, no, there's a few fussinesses. Um, but nothing of profound consequence. I'm going to not worry about them right now. We'll clean that up in a little bit. Um, so I think that well, it's actually just for fun. Uh, cargo run. Yep. It also runs. So we have renamed that and in new module, um, we also moved all this into a new individual module. Um, uh, boom, yeah. Commit all of that. So then then your idea is that the trait would live here. And we don't have a type, a name conflict, even if we had left the other thing as individual. Um, uh, so cool. And so now we have to turn that trait into something. It is pretty much 12 o'clock. So I say we, we wrap up. Um, nobody has said anything about whether we want to do this or do um, the uh, segmented file system. I'm actually feeling pretty jazzed about this at the moment. My personal inclination would be to carry on with this, like you just said. So if nobody objects, and I'm not seeing any, um, in two hours we will reconvene and we will turn this individual trait into something real um, and uh, continue to generalize the world with the goal of ultimately being able to evolve programs and not just bit strings. Um, uh, but I think this is very cool. I'm very happy. So thank you all very much. I'm going to go have some lunch and talk to family and I will see you again in two hours and we will do awesome things. It will be very exciting. Um, uh, this, hopefully, I think this link actually works in the QR code. Um, so feel free to join the Discord if you are so inclined. Um, would love to have feedback and thoughts and chat there. Otherwise, I'll see you in two hours. Thank you all very much. Goodbye.